What's so difficult about playing the double bass? Well, part of the problem is it's so blooming big. But the Alexander Technique can help you with that. The first thing you should think about, in my opinion, is balancing. Are you balancing with your instrument or are, are you holding yourself in your double bass playing posture? Balancing with the instrument means you're constantly moving. So when the instrument leans on you, then you lean on it just as much as it leans on you. And then you're in balance. Now, if you lean more on it than it leans on you, you're out of balance. Or if it's leaning on you and you're just trying to hold yourself here in your double bass playing posture, then that's not a good idea. So I'm looking for something which is minimum tension and constant movement, which I call balancing. Every time you make a gesture, your body tries to rebalance you. So if I do this, my body will try and rebalance me by moving parts of me in the opposite direction. And it's exactly the same when I play the double bass. So if I do a down bow, then my body will move in the opposite direction. Of me. And um, so that's something I don't have to do. It just happens. Now you might think because I practiced it, and maybe it is because I practiced it, but I'm allowing my body to rebalance. You can allow your body to rebalance too. Now, one of the tricky things about the double bass is moving from low positions to high positions. When you're in low positions, you can stand more or less the way you do when you're just standing waiting for the bus. But when you play in high positions, it's more like beginning to sit down. So if I go into a high position, if I'm about to go into a high position, what happens to me is I start to sit down, my pelvis goes backwards, so this part of my body goes backwards and makes a space for this shoulder of the instrument to move towards me. If I want to play in high position, I take my pelvis back, the instrument puts its neck on my shoulder, which is very nice because we get on well. I played in a high position and then in a low position and I was sort of sitting down a bit for the high position and standing up more normally when I was in low positions and I think that's the best way to do it. Now what you don't want to do is wrap yourself around the instrument. So if you wrap yourself around in the instrument <laughs> The sound becomes harsh, you can't breathe properly, you lose some of the space in the front of your body and, and the human being doesn't work well like that. We're much better off when we're expanding, not when we're contracting. So allow yourself to balance when you're playing the instrument. Another thing you can think about when you're playing the double bass is, are you breathing? It's very good to breathe because the oxygen goes into your blood and the blood goes to your brain and to your muscles and then they, they start working well for you. And guess what? You do have to use your muscles and your brain when you play the double bass. And uh, so you, plenty of oxygen in the blood means that will go better. What happens to stop good breathing is probably an anxiety response. So maybe you've got a solo to play you're just about to start playing a solo. Are you breathing freely or are you tightening up? If you were talking, would, would your voice sound a bit like this? So now I'm getting a bit nervous because I've got to play. I'm not breathing freely. My brain's not working well. My muscles aren't working very well. So what I need to do is make sure I'm breathing. Bring your attention to your breathing. And if you're breathing out or in, you're doing okay. And if you're not taking shallow breaths in and out, you're doing better. You don't have to talk to breathe freely, but it does sort of check up on you. So try playing and talking at the same time. Are you restricting your breathing or not?
Another thing you can do to free up your playing is to make sure you're not over focusing your vision. So when we're playing, it's great if we are aware of the environment. I believe the last thing we should do is actually look at our hands when we're playing. For instance, playing in high position. Everything starts going wrong if we're looking at the left hand. If you really want to look at your left hand, do a video recording and then look at the video recording. If you want to check up on your hand shape, but there's nothing to see on the fingerboard that says where you've got to put your finger, unless you've written on there, but it's not a good way to go. Uh, you're better off seeing the environment and your kinesthetic sense, the sense that tells you where your arms and your head and your feet are, your kinesthetic sense tells you where bits and pieces are in your body and whether they're moving or not moving. And if they're accelerating or decelerating, the kinesthetic sense is the best sense for musicians. So don't look at your left hand. <laughs> vibrating and that's a really good thing to do. One more thing I want to mention is body mapping. If we work out where the joints are that we're going to use to play the instrument and embody that knowledge, then we get better coordination. So let's think about how do we get the bow onto the string? Well, first of all, we've got to take all of the bow, so you, you get some, you have to, we can't discuss this here, we, we haven't got enough time. But your arm folds up at the elbow, so it folds up at the elbow. There are two joints of the elbow, and it's the one on the little finger side that folds up to get the bow up so you can put it on the string. But you also use this joint here, where your upper arm joins into your shoulder blade, to put your bow on the string. So body mapping your shoulder joint and your elbow joint with a little finger side bone, the ulna, uh, that's really a good start. And that gets the bow up there, ready to go. Now, which joint starts a down bow? Well, it's this one here. So that's interesting. The whole arm moves away from your body at this joint here. That's the beginning of a down bow. What's the end of a down bow? Well, it's this joint here, the one you folded up to get the bow up in the first place. So the little finger side elbow joint. So there are two of the, uh, the joints that we need to become aware of so we can use them for playing the double bass. Now, which one puts the bow on the string? It's the other joint at the elbow. So the joint on the thumb side is the one that turns the bow over and makes it possible to put the hair on the string. So this is a, a quick whistle stop tour of body mapping your bowing joints. Now, after this video, maybe you could think, which joints do I use when I use my left hand? How do I get my hand up there in the first place? And what's going on in them? Try and get that kinesthetic sense of what's going on. And that is how you embody the knowledge. So you can look in an anatomy book where the joints are, and then you can discover in your body where they are. And then you can start to get a sense of where they are in your body and the movement taking place. And that is embodiment of your functional anatomy. It's a really good idea for bass players to do that because we have a lot of gestures that we have to make. So big message I want to leave you with. So go away with this ringing in your ears. It's possible to be comfortable, totally comfortable when you play the double bass. You will never play your best unless you are totally comfortable. And it's not because you'll be distracted by the pain, but once you get to the point where your body is giving you a pain or discomfort, you've already lost some of your coordination because you've put pressure on nerves and the nerves are responsible for telling your body how to move. 
So if you're getting pain, you're doing something that you should consider changing as soon as possible. Your best playing will only be possible when you're totally comfortable. Good luck with finding a great Alexander teacher. Have fun with the lessons and I look forward to hearing you play sometime.